Hello guys, we're going to be doing something a little bit different today, which is going to be a character tier list. So this is a tier list for 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. I just finished this game not too long ago, and I absolutely loved it. It was such an amazing experience. And one of the things that makes the game shine above a lot of the other games that I've played recently are the characters in this game. There's so many different characters that we get to learn so much about their personalities and it's just very well written story and the characters in the story are also very well written. I do hope all of you got a chance to watch my playthrough of 13 Sentinels, but if you haven't, um, please check it out because it was just a lot of fun for me and everybody else who was watching. I'll leave a link in the description for that if I remember to. And I'll try to remember to put a little card at the top, which I've never done before, but I think I can figure it out. If not, I apologize. So when I finished this game, we did do this on stream, um, but I wanted to kind of redo this and I put a lot of people in S rank and I just wanted to kind of rebalance the list a little bit after having some more time to think about the game and, you know, my experience and what made the experience special as far as characters and so this is going to be new for anybody who was there for that stream um, it's going to be a little bit different this time and lastly if you guys have not played 13 sentinels then i recommend that you don't watch this because there are going to be spoilers and this is a game that you definitely should experience from start to finish whether you play it yourself or watch somebody else play through it this game is so, so worth it. With that being said, let's just get into it. All right, so it's interesting that the first character that we have on this tier list order that I just loaded up is Miwako because um, clearly she is the best girl and she needs to be in S rank. I don't think I need to say too much about this. I am going to assume that you guys are not monsters and agree with me that honestly, she should be like SS, SSS, like, you know, she should be way up there. But unfortunately, we don't have that many options. So Miwako is going to be in S rank. She is super cute, super bubbly. She is so caring and she just... The times that she made me laugh with her little comments with, you know, just the innocence about her and her little arm shakes when she got excited. And it's just nice to have like a character that's not for the most part in the know of everything that's kind of happening. And when she does get placed, you know, in the situation where she's kind of surrounded by all this craziness. The way she just kind of shows her maturity and, you know, was able to deal with it and get things done that needed to be done, while also just caring deeply for everyone around her. She's just great, okay? She's great. I could go on and on and on and on about Miwako, but we have to, we have all these other amazing characters to look at. So, okay, next up is going to be Goto here. Now, Goto, I'm going to place Goto in the B slot. Now, don't get me wrong, I really, really like Goto and all the Sentinel pilots. I could put them all in an S rank because overall everybody I feel like is an amazing character in their own right. But since I have, to, I, it would be boring if I put them all in S rank. So Goto is going to be here in the B. Now, Goto's character is very mysterious until like the very, very end of the game. And his whole arc is, you know, he's he's the logical one. He's the one who tries to not let his emotions get the better of him. We know that he has, you know, emotions and feelings for, you know, Morimura, for Shinonome. You know, she, he's very protective of her and all that, but for the most part, he's just very matter of fact, and we learn a lot about the story during his arc 
as opposed to learning too much about himself as a character. At least that's how I felt. So while I really, really like him, there were characters that just shined a little bit more than he did. Next up is going to be Juro Kurabe. Now, Juro, 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 he's like the main character, I guess, of this story um, for all intents and purposes, but I don't feel like his character really shown as much as some of the others as well. I'm going to put him in B rank. Juro lost his memory and was given a new personality, a personality that is um, kind of very meek, um, wants to follow all the rules, somebody who won't get into too much trouble, and he does really blossom as time goes, as he learns more about himself, the world around him, but overall, uh, he was not an S or an A rank for me. He's just a little bit of a blank slate, which is, I think, what they were going for. But for me, I'm not really fond of those kind of characters. So he's just going to be a B rank. Uh, Shinonome. Ryoko Shinonome. When I first saw her, I it was kind of like a love at first sight thing. She was just so adorable just standing there with her little bandages, and she's just the cutest thing I've ever seen. But by the end of it, she was not one of my favorite characters. She's actually going to go into the sea because I, it's not her fault, okay? Because she's been messed with. Ida just messed around with her emotions and so much more. She's losing her memory all the time. I just got a little bit frustrated playing through her story. I got frustrated with her constantly learning that Sekigahara is not 426. And then the next minute she's like, I got to get 426 and it's Sekigahara. And it's just like, girl, just please, please just remember. She's a great character, but I didn't get attached to her as much as I did the other characters. So don't hate me. That's just how I feel right now. Okay, next, Juro Izumi. Juro Izumi of two loops ago. Not the Juro Izumi that Juro Karabe used to be. <sighs> Juro Izumi. Now, this might come as a surprise um, to some of you, but I am going to place him and then I'll explain why. I'm going to place him into A. This character had so much mystery surrounding him and I thought it was so much fun learning little bits and pieces about Juro Izumi 426, the villain of the story as we are led to believe at the beginning. He kind of terrified me at first because, you know, he's running around in these androids. He's very dangerous. He's popping up in the train in Nenji's um, story where he's in, in the machine that Okino put him in. And like when he popped up and started talking, I was like, whoa, shit, like what is this guy doing here? And then as we go, we start to learn that really he is just a man who has been screwed over so many times by this world that he's in, by his own lover, by Ida, and he all he wants is just to see the end of these horrible loops. He wants to stop the Daimos. He wants everybody to be able to survive, and I don't really think that he is really in it for himself. You know, he, he lost his, his body. He's just a consciousness. Like, what exactly can he gain from helping, you know, the pilots of the current loop? We see that he does, you know, get a very happy ending in the end, but was that what he was expecting to happen? I don't think that he was really expecting anything for himself. 
and the different iterations of uh, Juro Izumi 426 are also very entertaining. We'll get into those guys later. But um, yeah, I just thought that his character is very interesting. There's a lot behind his motives and unraveling that mystery was a whole lot of fun. And I ended up really, really just being super fond of this guy. I think he's great. Okay, this video feels like it's going to be so long because I'm talking so much about these characters. Let's try to hurry this along because we have a lot of characters left. I'll try not to talk too much about them from now on. Next, we have a Sekigahara. So I'm going to put a Sekigahara into the A group. He also has some memory issues, kind of like Shinonome, but he was a lot more um, fun to play through. Even though he completely lost all his memories, he's just the kind of guy that's, he's very smart, he's very uh, calculated, he just knows how to get shit done. Like, he knows how to get shit done, and he's super cool while he does it. Taking out androids with his gun, riding in his awesome Batmobile bike, the way he interacts with Iori, the only word that I can think of to describe him is just, he's just cool. He just exudes this aura of just like suave, cool, and yeah, that's Sekigahara. Okay, next up, uh, limp dick hair, Mr. Wajima. I'm just going to put him in D. Um, he's just annoying. He's predatory and... He has no redeeming qualities. Okay, so that's Wajima. <laughs> Next up, we have Tomi Kisaragi. So Tomi, when I first met her character, I wasn't really fond of her. She kind of had this snobby air about her. There was all this horrible stuff happening, but she was just like kind of making fun of 1985. And, you know, it was like she wasn't, I felt like she wasn't taking things seriously. I kind of learned that it was more like she was in denial about what happened to her home world, uh, getting attacked by the Daimos, her parents probably being killed and every all of her friends along, you know, with them. She does kind of keep that aloof kind of air about her throughout. It's actually very endearing um, in the end. Uh, she is very sassy and she is going to actually be in an S rank. She went from one of my least favorite characters to one of my most favorite characters. This also might have something to do with her relationship with Nenji. I thought together they were just so cute together. So that's um, Tomi. Okay, I'm trying not to talk too much. Jesus, goddamn bunnies, shut the fuck up. I can't. These characters are amazing. Okay, Shu Amiguchi. So Shu, he was one of my favorite characters to start. He was like very cool, very, very sure about himself. He just had this kind of like very um, alluring air about him. I actually have bumped him down to an A though, because while I absolutely love Shu, he's super funny. I love, you know, just everything about him really. I didn't feel like he quite lined up with the other people that I felt very strongly about being an S rank. So I did bump him down from my previous tier list from an A to an, from an S to an A. Okay. Tamau. Tamau. Tamau, Tamau, Tamau. Tamau is a C. I really don't have much to say about her character. She wasn't really great. She wasn't bad. She was just kind of there. I mean, she's cool, I guess. It's kind of confusing because Tamau is like some somebody that I find kind of hard to pinpoint because there's like there's several different versions of Tamau going on. It's a little bit confusing. And she didn't really do much compared to a lot of the other characters. So Tamau is just a C rank. Ms. Morimura, Morimura of two loops ago, Teacher Morimura. Um, she is also a C rank. I mean, she got a really nice titty. She got a really nice ass, which is definitely points up. But she 
was just okay. You know, she's okay. She's cool. I was very happy that she got her her nice ending with Juro. Um, but she didn't really stand out to me too much. So she's a C. Okay, Tetsuya Ida. Tetsuya Ida. I do not like this guy. Um, I do not like this guy. He's creepy. He's manipulative. He's selfish. And he fucked up so much shit. And honestly, if he didn't get his happy ending in the end, I would have been perfectly okay with that. So, Tetsuya Ida, you can just screw the fuck off, okay? Okay. Next up, we have Kyuta Shiba, which is basically Juro Izumi, but the way he presents himself to Juro Karabe. So Kyuta, I didn't really trust him from the beginning because we see very early on that he has like kind of a very sinister line when Juro summons his sentinel. And so I knew that there was something off about this guy. We do learn that he actually is, like I said, Juro Izumi, a very, very great guy. I really loved the twist where... Instead of trying to overwrite Juro Karabe's memories, he was actually trying to save him from having a mental like breakdown with the very violent memories of, you know, his own memories, Juro Izumi memories. But if I have to rank him as just the um, Kyuta Shiba personality, he's just a B, you know? Like, I love Juro Izumi, but um, Kyuta Shiba is just not really, he's kind of a step down for me. As far as that persona. Um, Keitaro Miura. Now this is the one that I... I originally had him in S. And then I decided that I was going to put him in A. But I'm really questioning if he should actually be in S. Like he's like right in the middle here. Miura was one of my first favorite characters. Just like Shu Amiguchi was. But I, I feel like one of the main reasons that I felt so strongly attached to Miura was because he was his story was very interwoven with um Natsuno's which she was um somebody that I fell in love with very early on and so because she was he was important to her he was important to me now I'm not saying that he's not an amazing character and he's you know like on another day I could easily put him in in an S rank he would do anything for, you know, his people, his country, his um, his girl Natsuno, and he's just a very, very sweet guy. And that's pretty much all I can say about him right now, which is probably why he's more of an A than an S. He's just really sweet, um, but nothing too crazy about him, you know? He doesn't stand out as much as the other people that I put in S rank, I guess. Just a little bit below. All right, next up is BJ. Well, this is a no-brainer for me. BJ is just amazing. I love BJ. First of all, look at him. He's adorable. I really felt the bond between him and Natsuno was just so beautiful when he when he sacrificed himself so Natsuno could pilot the Sentinel. I just I'm going to cry again, but like it was so sad. And then when he came back, I was so happy. So maybe I can't really describe exactly why I love him, but I just know that I love him because it just it just makes me so emotional thinking about him. Oh, the feels of this game definitely stick with you for a while, don't they? Like such strong emotions, too. They just come flooding back. So yeah, BJ. BJ is great. Definitely an S tier. Okay. Tsukasa Okino. <laughs> Okino is definitely, definitely, definitely an S rank. He just, the way he teases Hijiyama just had me rolling with laughter all the, so many times. He's just... <laughs> he's just such an entertaining guy every time okino showed up on the screen i was just like what's gonna happen what is gonna happen now 
Okino is definitely not like the biggest sweetheart. We could see that he would go to some questionable lengths to find out the information that he needed. Who knows what he would have done to not know if she, he found out that she was the one that was carrying the key. But this guy is an absolute riot. And I just wish the best for him, you know? Okay, Natsuno Minami. She started out as one of my favorite characters, and she ended up as one of my favorite characters all the way till the end, all 50 plus hours. We are just loving Natsuno Minami. She is adorable. She's, she's nerdy in the most cutest way ever. Her upbeat personality and just how she got so into like the whole her whole theory about BJ being an alien and the men in black coming after her. And I just had so much fun um, with all of that. Natsuno is great and she is definitely an S rank for me. OK, this guy, uh, Onishi, Onishi the ogre, he is a D because he's just kind of I don't even know if he was I mean, I could be wrong, but what kind of purpose did he even serve? Like, he barely even really did anything for me in the story, and he was just kind of there. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't hate him as much as I dislike Wajima and Ida, but I definitely don't like him as much as these characters up here. So, he's a D rank for me. I just feel like he could have been omitted from the story. Maybe I'm thinking I'm missing something like super important, but I just feel like he could have just been omitted. Next up, Miyuki Inaba. Miyuki Inaba, she is a C for me. I would have had her a B, but it kind of left a really bad taste in my mouth when at the end, you know, after she was kind of pushing back against Ida and everything that he was doing to at the end just be like, I tr I've always trusted you and I, I, you know, you're the man that I love and I was just like, whoa, like, why are you being all like that with this creeper? She's definitely not like somebody that I dislike, but yeah, she definitely got knocked down a peg um, because of that whole ending scene. I don't I think I'm just probably I'm probably overreacting to it and I fully realize that, but I just felt kind of a very large aversion to her character um, with that ending scene. So just, it is what it is. Okay, Yuki Takamiya. Yuki is definitely an S rank. She's so spunky. I love her animations. She doesn't take crap from anyone. She's, she's a tough cookie and she absolutely has this um this bond which you know might have something to do with the fact that in 2188 yuki was natsuno's mom so she has like this this very strong like you know she wants to she cares for her she wants to protect her whether it be because of you know something got through the the cloning process with the motherly instinct or whatever i loved how dedicated she was to Natsuno and it just really warmed my heart when they got reunited at the end. She is very abrasive but she's also very very sweet and caring and she would do anything for the people she loves. So I love her. She's an S rank. All right. Iori. Iori Fuyusaka. Iori she's she's cool you know she's um she's a she's a she's a nice girl. I I enjoyed a lot of her story beats. She's a B rank. I think she's a B. She's she's probably cl kind of close to being a C. Like she was just kind of okay. But yeah, her her story with like kind of the whole, you know, trying to feed the cat, um, deciding what we're gonna eat for lunch was just kind of bland. Kind of hard to get into that. Her kind of shallow, blind, baseless love for Sekigahara was also a little bit off-putting. But there were some qualities that I really did enjoy about her as well. 
I just really loved her sense of like purpose. And I feel like even though she may seem kind of weak, that she's actually a very strong girl and um, she's just a bee. I don't know. She's a bee. <laughs> I'm kind of stumped on this one, but yeah, she's going to stay there. Okay. Takatoshi Hijiyama. Stir fried noodles and folded in a sweet bread. I don't trust much in this post war world, but if there's one thing I do, it's my yakisoba pan. <laughs> I might not have said it verbatim word for word correctly, but I never got tired of listening to that. Um, <laughs> Hijiyama is an S rank. I found him a little bit boring at first, but he really came into his own. He really blossomed with his love for his yakisoba pawn, which I enjoyed that they maybe they went like a little bit over the top with it, but it wasn't like in a bad way. I really enjoyed how they kind of gave him like his his own personality with that. Like that is something that is important to him, something that he loves. And so it just helps us get a little bit closer to his character and it was just a bit that I never got tired of eating that yakisoba pan and listening to him talk about his yakisoba pan. And then also just his utter confusion with his feelings for Okino. Like I said, every time they were on screen together, you know something crazy, wild, and hilarious was going to happen. Come on, Hijiyama, just admit your feelings already. <laughs> just admit to yourself. So yeah, he's an S rank. Okay, Nenji Ogata. When we first saw him in Hijiyama's story, he was, you know, we met Wajima and then Nenji comes and he's like another one of these punks with a weird hair that I really am not a fond of the, the whole hair thing going on. And then I was like, I thought he was one of these throwaway characters and I did not like him. And then I learned that he was actually one of the sentinel pilots and i'm like really this guy but you know what i was wrong i was absolutely wrong and i apologize profusely nenji you are an s rank you're amazing i love you nenji is one of my favorite characters of this game like if i were to rank my s ranks within the S rank, he would be one of the higher. He would be like towards the top. He has this tough exterior and he tries to put on this air of being a tough guy, but at the same time, he totally doesn't. Like when Yuki found his handkerchief drying um, on the rooftop, he's like, yeah, that's mine. So what? Like he's just kind of like, he doesn't give a fuck what anybody thinks about him, actually, now that I think about it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you think he's like this this punk, this guy who's just a troublemaker. And on the inside, you find out that he's absolutely the sweetest, probably the sweetest character in this whole fucking game. OK, there was somebody who mentioned in a YouTube comment in one of my uh videos for this series when Nenji and Tomi and Miwako got stranded in 2025 and he went and he found some some snacks and he was offering I think it was a chocolate I think he was offering to the girls and they were like well what about you and he's like oh I don't really like sweets and then later we find out that he really does like sweets so I liked that it was um, pointed out to me that he wanted to let them have it, but he w didn't want them to feel guilty about him not having it. And it's just, it's just little things like that that I really enjoyed about this character. And the way he just unabashedly will just tell everybody that he loves Tomi Kisaragi and he's going to protect her and that she's, she's the one who's important to him was just i just really like that gumption that he has you know he's hilarious i love him s rank for sure okay fluffy 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 is 
funny, but a little bit annoying sometimes. Um, I'm going to actually put him in the B as well. Uh, <laughs> I know he's Drew, he's me, Drew, he's me, is in the A. But Fluffy, the character Fluffy for me, I don't really like have too much to say about it. So in order to keep this video a little bit shorter, even because I know it's probably being like super long by now. Um, he's just going to be a B over with Q to Shiba. Okay, Megumi. Megumi, Megumi, Megumi. She's also a B. I guess just kind of her one one sided kind of obsession with Juro was just a little bit. I, I think I got a little bit tired of it. So while I did enjoy like, you know, the very caring way that she dealt with Juro and Miura when he was staying there. I did enjoy kind of seeing the turmoil that kind of compounded upon each other, compounded and compounded when she was, you know, shooting these people. And especially when with Tomi, like they were friends and then she felt like this guilt. She's just kind of like, you know, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. Yeah, she's just kind of somewhere in the middle. And then lastly, Chihiro Morimura, who we learn towards the end there is actually the 2188 Professor Chihiro Morimura actually consciousness survived and landed her, you know, awakened into this uh, simulation. I'm going to, uh, I think I originally might have put her in the C, but I think I'm going to put her in the D because, you know, when I think about it, I just really didn't care for her. She was just, I know she redeemed herself at the end, but yeah, I just really didn't care for her character too much. It just, she just really didn't do too much for me. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hate her. I didn't hate her. But I didn't really particularly like very much of anything about her. Yeah, she helped us in the end. But that doesn't mean I have to like her, right? <laughs> so that's my tier list. Now, this is a very uh, fluid, flexible tier list. If I replayed the game, I might move people around a little bit. But that's where I'm feeling right now in this moment. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video of mine, kind of different from anything that I usually do. Um, good to see you guys again from the 13 Sentinels playthrough. So thank you guys again for everything. 13 Sentinels is amazing. And again, I hope everybody will be able to play this amazing game that not a lot of people really know about. So let me know if you like videos like this and uh, maybe I'll do some more similar stuff in the future. Until then, have a good one, guys. Thank you for watching. See you around. Bye.